opinion. Lots of things are unconstitutional people do every day without fear of being caught upon it. We're going to have an awfully rough time in the Judiciary Committee this morning on crime control. The Republicans, uh, Chairman Sellers, really upset about it. They're going to take a straight party vote to uh, cut out Title II, which is the heart of the program. Well, you got to vote. Probably not. It's going to be off the coast. See, he's got it's a 15 20 committee, and he's got about uh, four or five uh, Southern Democrats that um, we just can't reach, fellas like Governor Tuck, Dowdy, Ashmore, White. We're working on them, but the uh, chairman just wants to go ahead, and I think he's right. We piddle around with them. They come in at the last hour. They called him yesterday. He was still up in New York. So they got a rewrite of the bill. But uh, it's just part of their wrecking crew uh, technique. And if they really do it, I think they made a serious political mistake because then I think we say, well, they do a lot of talking about crime, and they talk about wiretapping, they talk about confessions, but when you really get down to it, want to help the police, build the police, you give the police more money, they say no. Who's, uh, who's really against crime? You're, you're speaking what group down in Memphis? Am I? Yeah. No. And anything new on Edgar? No, he's, uh, he's a hard man to work with. He came to our U.S. Attorney's reception last night. First time he's ever been known to come. Which is very pleasing, but, uh, you know, he's his own way. Does it give you any trouble? It's tough. The press tells me he just undercuts all the time. His boys do. Right on. Principles or personality? A little of both. Probably. Probably. Four principles on personality. I think they they uh, work the personalities only to uh, strengthen the, their position on the principles. I don't think there's any personal antipathy at all. Now, who are his men? Deke in that group? Yeah. Is Deke his front man? Pretty much so. Well, you ought to tell him you want cooperation from him. Maybe I ought to tell him. Well, I'm not sure that's the way you secure it. Being out there. I think you just have to work at it on a personal basis. I'd say it's better than it has been at any time since I've been in the department, but it's still, uh, yeah. I think it was perhaps better control when Bob was there through fear. He didn't want to tackle that, but uh, <clears throat> it's, um, it's a personal relationship, probably the best it's been since I've been in the department. See, the Baltimore Sun predicts a marshal for me. Is that right? But it's liable to get out. Adam Clymer? I don't know who it was. But it's pretty much on the nose. And I don't know how in the hell they, they go back and review it. We're attending that Baltimore Sun story here. It's not irritable, but it's Marshall Loom to the next justice. <laughs> Very good Marshall appears to be the most likely candidate of the vacancy at Tom Clark's retirement. Marshall, a Baltimore born civil rights attorney, would be the High Court's first Negro jurist as he was the first Negro to argue the government's cases before the Court of Solicitor General. An appointment of the Court is expected imminently. Justice Clark commented during his last day on the bench today, predict the President would appoint someone who will fill my shoes to overflowing, possibly break them open. Marshall has frequently reacted to speculation he might become the first Negro justice by scoffing. That's not in the cards. But the president's high regard for the former chief counsel 
shown when he named in the Justice Department number three post and has been repeatedly reaffirmed. Last June, addressing the White House Conference of Civil Rights, President said, I might say that the President of the United States does not often have the opportunity to introduce another speaker. But I am glad that tonight I do have that opportunity. I'm going to introduce to you one who 12 years ago established the field civil rights beachhead from which we'll never retreat. Since that day, he has already occupied two great offices, Distinguished Justice Court of Appeal, now as the Great Celestial of the United States of America, and the President perhaps responding to a faint undercurrent of criticism by Marshall's performance in office, added, and let no man ever say that he is not a qualified lawyer and judge. As a judge of the United States Circuit Court of New York, Marshall took a general liberal view of constitutional criminal law issues, but not in the manner of a social reformer. He was one of the few judges there to have any background as a defense attorney. I don't think it's... Uh, it doesn't seem like it's a leak. It seems like it's just kind of based on what the facts appear to be. Was it had a primer, did you know that? No, it's not. It doesn't have any. It doesn't have any. Climber is the, the court man for the sun, and I see him all the time. That's, uh, I think that's, that's a natural uh, choice. I'd, uh, I'd say it'd be the most probable to the casual observer. What will uh, the papers say about the opponent? Well, uh, I think there'll be some little riffle about uh, what about the Times and the Post. Say it's political. I think the Post will be favorable and the Times favorable. The uh, the Times, if it's affected otherwise, will be uh, by some of the guys on the Second Circuit that served with him that uh, didn't like you too well. Just on the ground, what you said. Well, that's my interpretation of it. I think they'd put it on intellect and uh, industry. But the record, uh, how do you do all these things if he's lazy and incompetent? Did he argue the Brown case? The school case? Well, I'm trying to think. I, uh, let's see. I've got this thing here that may say. I don't believe so. Well, I guess maybe it did, too. It says significant Supreme Court victories include uh, elimination of separate but equal in education, so I guess he did. What was he regarded when you were coming up as a young lawyer? Was he regarded the best the Negroes had? He's the only one anybody knew about outside the few local practitioners. His name is a part of American history right now. He started the lonely fight uh, back when there were very few at it. And he was able enough, both with people and with the issues, to work constructively at a time when it wasn't at all easy. It's hard to remember that uh, even when I was in law school, he, uh, a Negro lawyer was a great peculiarity, you know. You just wondered what in the world that was all about. Still far too few. One. You get a hold of your judge committee, and what's he going to do? Get them all on the phone? He's going to get them all on the phone. He's standing by at the Madison Hotel right now. How many are there? 11 or 12? There are 12. He won't call until about 10. That'll be 7 o'clock out on the coast, and he's got to pick up uh, Oklahoma, Iowa, and uh, California. What'd you say about the coast? I said it's just. So early out there now that he won't call until about 10 o'clock. Yeah. He can have it done within an hour. Uh, so what he'll do is get them all on a conference call or call them individually? He'll get them all on a conference call. His secretary called him last night and asked him to be available. He's been in Washington and talked with me and had some matters of urgency that he wanted to review with. All right, now we're going to name the California boy, too. 